Hello students, welcome to the course of Data Communication and Networks. I am your course instructor Dr. Munir Ober. In today's lecture we will be studying about multiplexing. We know that devices use a medium for connectivity and we also know that the bandwidth of this medium can be shared among multiple devices. So the today's lecture is about the techniques for sharing this single link among multiple devices. This is actually known as multiplexing. These are the contents for our today's lecture. First, we will study about the multiplexing, the basic concept about the multiplexing. Then we have two major types of multiplexing. The first one is frequency division multiplexing. This is used for analog signals. Then we have time division multiplexing. This is used for digital signals. In the time division multiplexing or TDM, we have two types. The first one is synchronous time division multiplexing and the second one is statistical time division multiplexing. So we will look into all these with some example questions and their solutions. Multiplexing. In general cases or in general scenario, we say that two devices are connected or uh, two devices use a single medium for connecting each other or single link. So this link is used by a single device at a time or for four duplex this this single link is shared among both the devices for communication. So if we have multiple devices connected to a single link then we have two options. The first one is that each device must be given uh, a portion of time so that in that time the device may occupy the link or we can say that this link can be shared among all the connected devices. So multiplexing actually deals with the sharing of link among the connected devices. Under the simplest conditions or general conditions a medium can carry only one signal at any moment of time. For multiple signals to share one medium, the medium must somehow be divided, giving each signal a portion of the total bandwidth. So this medium is divided among all the devices and the bandwidth of this medium is shared with these connected devices. So this is known as multiplexing. Whenever the bandwidth of a medium linking two devices is greater than the bandwidth need of the devices, the link can be shared. So if we don't share the link, then it would be half duplex or simplex. So for full duplex, we need the link to be shared among the devices. We are talking about two devices. There might be multiple devices on a single link. So for that case, also the multiple devices will share the common link. Multiplexing is the set of techniques that allow the simultaneous transmission of multiple signals across a single data link. Multiple signals across a single data link. So we have only one link and on that link multiple devices are sending or transmitting their data by using their signals. So definitely there would be multiple signals on a single link. As the data and communication use increases so does traffic so the communication and data is increasing day by day the number of nodes is also increasing so the traffic from the devices or nodes is also increasing and for that purpose the multiplexing is the only solution to let the connected nodes share a single medium or limited medium among them by giving multiple signals this figure shows the dividing of a link into multiple channels we have a single link or single medium between multiple devices at both ends at one end we have n number of input lines 
these are actually the hop, hops or hosts or devices which are connected to a multiplexer so the signals from these devices are combined and from here different channels are created in a single medium and transmitted at the same time at the other end at receiving end the multiple devices which are connected to a demultiplexer receive the data from these devices so the demultiplexer takes the data from a single link having n channels and according to these channels divide the data and forward the data toward the corresponding ends multiplexing two or more simultaneous transmission on a single circuit simultaneous transmission on a single circuit the categories of multiplexing we can divide the multiplexing into three main categories the first one is frequency division multiplexing fdm the second one is wavelength division multiplexing F, uh, wdm and the third one is time division multiplexing time uh, tdm the first two are used for analog signals we have already studied about the types of signals and this one tdm is used for digital signals so the tdm is actually used for digital networks for our lands uh, for our computer networks and these two can be used for any communication system in this lecture we will study about the fdm and tdm the wdm is not in our course so we will not discuss this one first frequency division multiplexing assignment of non overlapping frequency ranges to each user or signal on a medium so what happens in fdm each user is given a particular frequency range and that range doesn't overlap with the range of any other device in the network or any other device connected to that multiplexer thus all signals are transmitted at the same time each using different frequencies so we have different nodes and each one is given its own frequency and that frequency range doesn't overlap with any other range so in that case these all signals can be transmitted at the same time a multiplexer accepts inputs and assigns frequency to each device now if you look into this diagram here we have multiple devices at one end and at the other end we have also some devices connected to multiplexer and demultiplexer the link is divided into multiple channels now here if we look into this figure we have the division of frequencies we have computers connected to a multiplexer and this multiplexer uh, can multiplex the signals of these devices connected so for each for each user a range is given a range of frequency is given for pc1 let's say we have channel number one it starts from 2001 to 4000 the second one channel starts from 2000 to 6000 and so on so these are non overlapping frequency ranges assigned to different devices on the other hand we have this multiplexer and this multiplexer can also demultiplex the combined frequency which has different channels of different uh, frequency ranges which are non overlapping and these can can distinguish the data received from these devices so a multiplexer is attached to a high speed communication line at both end we use a multiplexer this demultiplexer also works as a multiplexer if these devices want to transmit data a corresponding multiplexer or demultiplexer is on the other end of the high speed line and separate the multiplexed signals so this one multiplexer or demultiplexer separates these channels from the line and forward the data to corresponding devices the frequency division multiplexing 
is used for analog signals. Analog signaling is used to transmit the signal, broadcast radio, television, cable television and the amps cellular phone systems use frequency division multiplexing. Now if you look into uh, the cable TV, we, we, when we tune the channels we find different ranges for different TV channels. So our, all these channels are transmitted on a single coaxial cable and here we tune their frequencies and get these different channels on our TV. This technique is the oldest multiplexing technique. This is actually the initial multiplexing technique and this, this was introduced for the radio and television systems and later this was also used for AMPS, the first generation cellular networks. Since it involves analog signaling, it is more susceptible to noise. We have already studied the impairments, so the noise is more effective on such type of signals because these are continuous signals and continuous signals are more susceptible to noise. FDM, uh, the frequency division multiplexing, is an analog multiplexing technique that combines analog signals. We would have multiple users having multiple signals and user 1, user 2 and user 3. Let's say there are three signals and these are different from three users. So what happens? These signals are combined together and transmitted. So this method is called frequency division multiplexing and this is used for analog signals. So we have three baseband analog signals. These signals are modulated by using modulators and some frequencies are created. So we have now three type of different frequencies. After that, these three frequencies are combined by using a multiplexer having the technique of FDM frequency division multiplexing and a sing single signal is generated on the link. Now this single link has multiple signals multiplexed together and receiving end we will have another multiplexer or demultiplexer like this one. Uh, here we have demultiplexer and we got a combined signal having multiple signals and all the signals are not overlapping with each other so if they are not overlapping then we can use uh, a filter to filter out a particular signal just like when we tune the tv channels so we give a particular frequency and on that particular frequency we get some particular tv channels so filters are used and after filtration a demodulator is used and the base band signal is obtained. We have multiple examples in this lecture. So we are starting with example number one. Assume that a voice channel occupies a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz. So for voice channel we need 4 kilohertz. We need to combine three voice channels into a link of bandwidth of 12 kilohertz. So 4 kilohertz multiplied by three voice channels equals 12 kilohertz from 20 to 32 kilohertz so the range would start from 20 and would end on 32 so the configuration using the frequency domain assume there is no guard band actually uh, when we combine these signal we use one additional signal of small size and that that signal is used to avoid any sort of overlapping among the signals that signal is known as guard signal so there is no guard signal since uh, we we need 12 kilohertz 
and the range is also from 20 to 32 so there is no space for god band solution we shift modulate each of the three voice channels to different bandwidth these voice channel are from 1 to 4 and we would change this from 1 to 4 to some values between 20 to 32 we can check this in the figure for 1 2 and 3 users the bandwidth is 4 kilohertz from 0 to 4 and now we we would change this to a value between 20 to 32 so for the first we are modulating it to some new ranges and these ranges are from 20 to 24 for second user we are starting with 24 ending with 28 and then from 28 to 32 is given to the last user now if you look into these ranges these ranges are not overlapping with each other so we can easily combine these so we will have a bigger bigger frequency starting from 20 and ending on 32 in between we have these small frequencies for these users we use the 20 to 24 kilohertz bandwidth for the first channel as we did here then 20 to 28 kilohertz bandwidth for the second channel this one and then 28 28 to 32 kHz bandwidth to the third one this one and after that we combine all these and get a multiplexed signal starting from 20 to 32 having all these frequencies or all these bandwidths at receiving end these these are filtered and then demodulated and the base frequencies or the base ranges are obtained which are of 4 kilohertz then we have example number two five channels one two three four five five channels each with 100 kilohertz bandwidth 100 kilohertz for each are to be multiplexed together what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is a need for a guard band of 10 kilohertz between the channels to prevent interference now if you look into the figure here we have a bit space of 10 kilohertz again 10 kilohertz 10 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz so these are actually for the guard band these the these 10 kilohertz slots are used for separating the 100 kilohertz bandwidth and the total bandwidth is 540 kilohertz so the solution for five channels we need at least four guard bands in between if there are five channels so in between there would be four guard bands this means that the required bandwidth is at least 5 into 100 100 plus 100 100 100 100 so 5 into 100 plus 4 into 10 so 5 channels each having 100 kilohertz and 4 guard band each having 10 kilohertz so this will give us 540 kilohertz example number three four data channels digital data channels each transmitting at one megabits per second use a satellite channel of one megahertz design an appropriate configuration using FTM now here we have four data channels we have four data channels each having one mbps megabits per second and the satellite channel is of one megahertz so this one is of one megahertz so we need to combine all these 
for 1 megahertz so here what we do the satellite channel is analog and our system is digital we divide it into four channels each channel having a 250 kilohertz bandwidth each digital channel is of 1 mbps in modulated such that each four bits is modulated to one hertz one solution is 16 qam modulation qam is the quadrature amplitude modulation it can be 8 16 64 128 and 256 so by using 16 quadrature amplitude modulation we convert each four bits into one hertz now if you calculate this then one megabits per second would need 250 kilohertz 250 250 for the four users and multiplex these all by using the frequency division multiplexing and if we combine all these without any guard band it would be one megahertz and this one is transmitted toward the satellite in frequency division multiplexing we can also implement the analog hierarchy in which